You know, the more I think about it, the more outrageous and downright audacious what Tesla's full self-driving team is doing seems. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So first of all, I've done a couple of more technical episodes recently, so you should definitely check them out. I will put links at the end and I will put it up here if you're interested. Did 10.69 release notes, and also I did an explainer video about Ashok Eliswamy's talk at CVPR 2022. But while I was working on both of these things, it kind of started to dawn on me how ridiculous the task that Tesla's full self-driving team has set for themselves. So I wanted to take a moment and step back from the details and look at the broader picture and really examine how ridiculous what they're trying to do is and how cool it is that they're actually doing it. So first of all, I have to admit that as a consumer of this technology, it's never fast enough or good enough, right? We always want more, we want it faster, we want it better, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, as a consumer, I'm like, come on, make it happen yesterday and let me have my car drive me to work and make money for me via robo taxis and whatnot. But when I start to look at the details of what they're actually doing, the task that Tesla's autopilot team has set themselves is really pretty audacious. And I actually wonder if you could go back in time to like 2015 or 2016 and you could show Elon Musk just how difficult this all has been, whether he would decide that it was worthwhile putting in the kind of funding and effort that has been put in to this task over the past six or seven years. I of course have a feeling that he still would say yes, but he would probably go like, wow, I thought it would be like pretty easy and it's turned out to be much more difficult. So anyway, what is the problem here? Why is this so audacious? There are actually actually four main reasons why this is such a difficult task. The first one is hardware, and that just has to do with compute and with computers getting better and everything. Obviously, Tesla works on their own chips and makes their own chips, but they are beholden to the te technology and the state of the art of things in the world at large. So clearly, they can't move too much faster than the rest of the world, but that also has a fairly predictable march over time. So I think we can kind of put that aside because the basic idea is that compute power is going to get better and better over time. You know, it's going to double approximately every eight. 18 months to 24 months. And so if you can't quite do it now, just wait a year or two and it should work. So I think that's the least of the worries. The second area is taking academic type research, cutting edge research, things that you're dealing with the very edge of the envelope of knowledge and trying to turn that into a commercializable product. And when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about the fact that Tesla uses by FPNs, which are state of the art kind of things. They use transformers, which are state of the art, just a couple of years old. They use technology that just a year or two or three or four ago was just in a research paper at the very, very bleeding edge. And people were saying like, look, we found this new technique. It works really, really well. And how cool is this? And to take that cutting edge research stuff, yeah, sure, it's great. It works in the lab and it's all fantastic when you have toy little problems and and you configure the world to work just the way you want it to, to take that to a commercializable product that works in all sorts of circumstances, even if it was a relatively simple thing, is very, very difficult. And you can see this, for example, in Dolly 2. That's a research project that's been turned into something of a commercializable thing, and it's very cool. You type in some sort of prompt about pandas wearing sombreros floating in space above the Earth, and Dolly gives you results. But you also notice the fact that it doesn't always give you really, really good results. It gives you fun results, and it gives you interesting results, perfectly fine for what they're doing. Doing, but it doesn't give you perfect results every single time. And that is a significant problem, especially when you're doing mission critical type work, which Tesla is obviously doing because a car crashing is a very deadly and horrible event. So it's got to be as close to perfect as possible. And it's really, really hard to bridge the gap between research and practicality. And normally, you know, it can take, with battery technology, for example, lithium ion batteries were developed in the late 70s, early 80s, if I'm remembering correctly. And it was really not until the mid 2000s, even to 2010, 2011, 2012, that they really started to become commercially viable. And also, of course, the prices were very, very high at that point and they came down. Now, I know that's hardware as opposed to software, but it still, it takes a lot of time to go from proof of concept to say like, this actually works to this works in every circumstance. There's a 
big, big gap between those two things. The third element is the massiveness of the scale of this problem. Elon Musk has talked about it's basically solving a lot of real world artificial intelligence, and that's really the case. This is not something where it's just a one-off and you're trying to do one small little box in the world. This car has to interact with the world, with the universe of 2D roads, and yes, and 3D objects on the sides of the roads, and people, and bicycles, and trucks, and stuff falling off of trucks, and people going at different speeds, and grubby stuff being on the front of your windshield, and nighttime, and daytime, and glare and lights and all sorts of different lighting conditions and weather conditions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There is just a massiveness to the scale of this. And I think that's the thing that I feel is the most audacious aspect of this. They keep working on pieces of this and every time they work on a piece, it's like pulling a thread out of like a sweater, right? It just keeps coming and coming and coming. They were never going to get done because every time they build a neural network to do something, there's something else that they're like, oh crap, we need to do that. And then there's something else over here they need to do. And then there's something else they need to do. So the number of neural networks and the way that they all have to interact keeps growing. And then every once in a while, and I think 10.69 release was one of these things, they kind of take it all and they're like, what do we not need anymore? And how can we compress this? So it sort of grows and grows and grows and turns into spaghetti code kind of thing. And then they have to go in and they have to like mine through this all and figure out what's being, what's working, what's efficient, what's not throw away the stuff that isn't, rebuild the things that are, and make sure everything works. Now, how are they doing this? They're doing this with a relatively small group of people, but they're doing it with massive data and really, really intelligent stuff. And they're going back and using that cutting edge research that's just coming off the line from universities. And while this is an immense problem, they do have all of the pieces in place in order to solve it, if anybody's going to, and that's very, very impressive. The fact that they're using so few people to do this, I know they've got thousands of labelers, but the core team of people that's actually writing the code and doing that is just a few dozen people. It's really, really tiny. If you kind of compare this to like the US moonshot in the 1960s, when they built the Mercury, Gemini, Apollo craft, and they sent a person eventually to the moon, a bunch of people to the moon, you had the entire nation, the backing of the whole nation, and hundreds of thousands of people, I think I recall three, four hundred thousand people were working directly on the project at one point, right? All across the United States. Not the most efficient thing in the world, but they had incredible resources. You've got people who have a lot of money, but there's very, very few people involved in actually working on this. And it's incredible that one company with relatively few people can actually make this happen and are making this happen. And that is just super, super impressive to me. And fourth and finally, and the part that really makes this super difficult is the mission criticalness of it. I mentioned that before briefly, but basically you can't have mistakes. This thing has to work 99.9999999% of the time correctly. Yes, it can have a mistake every once in a great, great while, but if and when it does, Tesla is going to get raked over the coals in the media and of course get sued their pants off for all of this kind of stuff. So it's a really, really challenging task because not only are you dealing with cutting edge stuff, massive data sets, incredibly, insanely difficult circumstances where you're trying to deal with all of these different pieces of the real world, but at the same time, you can't make a mistake. And like I said at the beginning, that means that this is a really audacious undertaking. It's something that really probably shouldn't be undertaken. Normal sane people would probably say, no, this is a bad idea. It's just going to be too difficult. We'll go down this road a little while and we'll realize just how hard it is. And we'll just turn back and say like, nope, nobody in their right mind is going to keep working on this. And it's something that maybe will get solved in 40 or 50 years, but it's not going to happen now. But of course, the awesomeness of Elon Musk and Tesla and the AI team is that they're staring down the barrel of this ridiculously hard problem and they're like, yep, we're just going to keep working on it and we think we can solve the problem and every time we run into a dead end or a wall or something like that, we just science the crap out of it. I mean, it's pretty amazing that they're able to do that. These people are incredibly impressive, but not just impressive intelligence wise and IQ wise and engineering skills wise, but also just the fact that they are able to keep going day by day by day and say we are going to solve 
solve this problem, even though it seems so intractable. When I work on tiny little problems, I get so frustrated, you know, I'll just be like, oh, I can't work on this stupid thing. I was actually working on something like this all afternoon this afternoon, and it's a very intractable problem, and it's very frustrating, but it's a tiny little problem. It's nothing, it's not a big deal, not earth shattering to by any means at all. But these guys are in that same situation, but it's every day, all the time, they're working on all of these seemingly intractable problems that don't seem to have good solutions, and yet they keep coming up with solutions to the problem. And that, in the end, is why we all actually need Tesla, because they're the people who are going to push this technology into the future, just like they did with EVs. Everybody said EVs were a bad idea in the early 2000s. They said this is a ridiculous thing. Maybe by 2050 we'll have EVs. But Tesla said, nope, this is an impossible task and we're going to do it. They're doing the exact same thing with autopilot slash full self-driving with AI. And I for one, and I think you probably will too, find it incredibly impressive how audacious this task is and the fact that they're actually doing it is pretty mind-blowing. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun and interesting and thought-provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it, and of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. And of course, if you wanna join the team, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have TeslaBot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.